Hey guys, today I want to take a look at the best case scenario currently for the Republican Party in the 2024 presidential election. So for them, I have Donald Trump as the Republican nominee. I do think that currently he is the best person that the GOP can put up and nominate for the 2024 presidential election because I do think that he is the most electable Republican. Uh, he is able to unite the most of his base, and I also think that he will appeal much better to independents than he did in 2020 against Joe Biden. In 2016, he did this very well. He won independence um, by 20, 30 points in many states, and that's why he won the upper Rust Belt. Uh, in 2020, he was unable to do that, which is why Joe Biden was able to flip back so many states in the 2020 presidential election. I mean, look at the 2020 map, and then you look at 2020, you have five flipped states and one flipped congressional district. So Joe Biden really did do very well with independence in 2020. However, looking at his approval of 42.9%, this basically is everybody in the Democratic Party, um, and he basically have everybody in the GOP disapproval. Proving. So really, for independents at this point, um, they're not going to side with the Democratic Party in 2022. If you look at the generic congressional ballot, for the first time since, I believe, 2016, the GOP has taken the lead in terms of polling for the generic congressional ballot. And this all reflects the one fact that the Democratic Party right now is not doing good. They have control of the entire government, the House, the Senate, and the executive branch. And the people uh, in, you know, in the country, they are not satisfied with the job that the Democratic Party currently is doing, which is why um, they are on such a horrible course going into 2022 and 2024. For Kamala Harris, I think that she is a pretty weak vice president and someone that is not able to campaign too well. That's why her 2021 was so disastrous, even though she had one good debate performance. Uh, so for Kamala Harris, this approval rating right here is going to be a major issue for her. Um, and she honestly is not a vice president that has done too much. She is not, you know, that influential, especially, you know, compared to Joe Biden. And, you know, many people around her have said that they're upset with the roles that Biden is giving her, saying that, you know, they're you know, making her do things that are very hard to do, like the border crisis and immigration. Um, there's really no, you know, good way to actually solve that. So, you know, they're giving Kamala Harris at this point jobs that, you know, they're basically setting her up for failure at this point. And if you look at the favorability of Donald Trump, it is literally higher than Kamala Harris is right now at 40.5. Donald Trump has a favorability rating currently of 41.5%. And when he left office in 2021, he had an approval rating of 38.6. So it's very comparable to Kamala Harris's approval rating. And yes, there have been less polls that were released for the vice president, but her approval rating at her lowest point, 28%. Donald Trump never reached that number, not even close. His lowest approval rating was at around 37%, where Kamala Harris has been at many points during her vice presidency already. So today I want to take a look at the worst case scenario for the Democratic Party if they were to nominate Kamala Harris, and if Donald Trump were to be dominated by the GOP, riding a wave of support against the Democratic Party and for the GOP as we're currently seeing, at least with the generic congressional ballot, because I mean, for the Republicans to lead, this has not occurred um, since the 2016 general election. So I'm going to start off by filling in the solid states for Kamala Harris. I think that she is still going to hold on to these states with solid margins. Uh, at this point, it is very difficult to defeat the Democratic Party in these states. Even if she is a horrible nominee, she is still probably going to end up winning all of these states with solid margins. Uh, if you look at past election results, I mean, you'll see New York 23%. That'll be pretty hard to beat. Uh, Massachusetts 33%. California 29%. Uh, Maryland 33%. The District of Columbia 86%. I mean, Biden won 92% of the vote here. And this district has voted for the Democratic Party in every single election since its creation, even if you go back to the biggest landslide in American history with the election of 1984 and Ronald Reagan's re-election, the Democratic Party, they still won. Walter Mondale still won 85% of the vote in Washington, D.C. So, I mean, many of these Democratic establishment states um, that are you know, Democratic stronghold states, they are going to vote uh, for Kamala Harris, and this will give her automatically 113 electoral votes. So I do think that it's harder for the GOP to win a 400 electoral vote landslide uh, than it is for the Democrats at this point. However, for the solid states for Donald Trump, I have more than I've ever given him. Um, so basically, all of these states here in the middle of the country I have as solid for the former president. I think Kansas and Missouri, they're going to be miles away above 15%. I think 20-25% is what we are likely to see. Um, I also have the state of South South Carolina. I've never given the state of Donald Trump as a solid state before, and the state of Alaska. So I think that in both these states of South Carolina and Alaska, the margin will go up. Um, in 2020, Trump won both these states by around 10%. In 2016, he won them by around 14%. So there's really no doubt at this point um, that he's going to win both these states by over 15 percentage points and make it solid. I think that Kamala Harris is much worse of a nominee than Hillary Clinton. Um, 
just in terms of her appeal, I don't think she's going to do any better than the former Secretary of State. So this gives Donald Trump 125 electoral votes. I also do have the second district of Maine, which I think that Donald Trump is going to carry very strongly um, in this scenario. And this gives him a total of 126 to Kamala Harris's 113 electoral votes with their solid states filled in. And now for the likely states, again, I mean, these are really the only states that I can really give to Kamala Harris at this point. Uh, the states of Washington and Oregon, I think, are both going to remain in the Democratic column. Illinois is really not going to go Republican anytime soon. The Chicago area really is keeping them afloat. However, as you know, more people move into these more, um, the, into, you know, into the suburbs of Illinois more and, you know, more leave Chicago, the state is going to shift more and more to the right as it currently is, following the trend of the greater Rust Belt area. Uh, you also have many East uh, Coast states as well, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Jersey, and Delaware, all as likely for Kamala Harris. And I also have the first district of Maine, which is one of the most Democratic regions in the country still, um, but it will still go for the Democratic Party, giving Kamala Harris 181 electoral votes. Now, for Donald Trump, I have of quite a few likely states for him as well. Um, some pretty big ones, starting off with the state of Iowa. Uh, the state of Iowa, six electoral votes, as well as Ohio. I have both of these states going for Donald Trump. Um, these, you know, states used to be states that the Democratic Party could easily win. I mean, 2008, you saw Obama win Iowa by 9.5% and Ohio by 4.6%. In 2008, Obama won the entire Rust Belt. Uh, in 2012, he won most of it, with the exception of Indiana. And then in 2016, everything was lost for the Democratic Party, with the exception of Minnesota, with which Clinton barely held on to, and Illinois, which, you know, because of Chicago, has been Democratic for a very, very long time. 2020, Joe Biden is able to flip most of them back, but Iowa and Ohio, I mean, their margins do not change. I don't think these two states are going to go solid for the Republican Party. It's been a very long time since the state of Ohio or Iowa has won, you know, has gone for a party by over 15 percentage points uh, because of how much in the middle they used to be. I mean, in 2000, Gore still won Iowa while the state of Ohio did go to Georgia Lee Bush. So both these states have had history with both parties, but as time goes on, these states with the rest of the Rust Belt has shifted significantly to the right. I don't think it's going to be solid uh, for Donald Trump in 2024. I think that's almost impossible, but I do think that Trump is going to win these states by some pretty big margins of at least double digit margins against Kamala Harris. And I also have the state of Texas. I don't think Texas is going to be solid, even though Donald Trump is going to be riding a wave of support for him. I think it'll be very hard for him to win by over 15%. Of course, the last time the state of Texas went solid red was in 2012 with the election of Barack Obama, but um, Mitt Romney did, of course, win uh, the state of Texas by 16 points in 2012. So even though, I mean, Romney did end up losing the election, winning only 200 electoral votes, he was still able to win the state of Texas by 16 points. The last time the state was solid was, of course, in 2004 under George Lee Bush, who won by 23%, and this was his home state, and he was the former governor of the state before becoming president. So um, you had Bush winning this state by big margins. Uh, 1996 and 1992, they were pretty weak uh, for uh, Bush Sr. in his re-election, losing to Clinton, and 1996 for Bob Dole. Um, but of course, in 1990, uh, 1988, Bush wasn't able to win this with a solid margin either um, against Michael Dukakis. However, of course, before this, Reagan, of course, won it by big margins. And the last time that a Democrat actually won in the state of Texas was in 1976 with the election of Jimmy Carter. Uh, he was really the last Democrat to win the entirety of the southern region of the United States. Of course, Bill Clinton did that almost in 1992, um, winning all the way you know, down to Louisiana from the state of Minnesota the last time you know you saw a string of states going from north to south voting for one party so um, 1976 really was the last time that the state of Texas ever voted for the Democratic Party, and I think that it will take a while for this to change. I think that for the governor and Senate election, things can definitely change faster, but on the national level, it will still take a little bit of time because Donald Trump is an especially weak candidate um, in Texas, and he has shown this. He has performed pretty poorly in both 2020 and 2016. I mean, the margin in 2012 decreased by over 10% because of Donald Trump for the GOP. So I do think he's still going to win it by a likely margin. I think it will be double digits, but nothing um, over 15 percentage points. So this gives Trump now 189 electoral votes. And now I'm going to move on to the lean states that I have for the former president. Um, in this scenario, I think that this is a pretty realistic scenario considering where we are right now. I think if the election was held today, I think that many of these states would actually vote for the GOP um, by these big margins because of just how unpopular the Democratic 
right party really is right now. They have a year to change things before 2022 and three before 2024. But right now, I mean, looking at the nominees they have, I don't think things are looking too good for them. You have Kamala Harris, one of the most unpopular vice presidents in modern history. Pete Buttigieg, who is pretty unelectable um, on a national level within the Democratic Party. I think he can definitely win the nomination. But with independence, I don't think he's going to have any sort of appeal. And Joe Biden, who is by far the oldest president in American history. So although I think Joe Biden is the best nominee right now, the best bet for the Democratic Party, um, they really are very short on candidates. And that's why I do think Joe Biden's the best nominee. Um, but of course, somebody can come out, you know, of the primary, you know, you know, before being basically virtually unknown. But at this point, um, Joe Biden uh, seems as if he's going to be running for re-election. I do have some doubts on that, um, but I do feel that right now, at least the Democratic Party is struggling to find some good replacements for the president. So looking at the lean states, there are quite a few. I'm going to start off with the state of Florida. I think this is one of the least surprising ones, 30 electoral votes. I don't think Trump's going to win this by over seven points, uh, even though it, you know it is a state that Trump did very well in in 2020. Um, it will be very difficult for him to win this state by over seven percentage points. It is still one of the um most competitive states in the country and has been for a very long time. The last day, yeah, you know, the last time Florida went by over seven percent to any candidate um, was a very, very long time ago, and that was 1988 with the election of George H. W. Bush. So, um, the state of Florida, 21 electoral votes at the time, 30 um, now in 2024. Um, I do have as lean for Donald Trump. I also have the neighboring state of Georgia, which I do think that Trump will be able to flip back. Um, he's not going to win this state by over seven points. Um, even in 2016, he won by 5.1. Um, I don't think he's going to be able to increase off the margin there too much, considering the fact the Democratic Party has done pretty well there for quite a while. Um, I also have the second district of Nebraska as lean for Donald Trump. Uh, the state of North Carolina, 16 electoral votes being lean as well. Uh, this state was won by Barack Obama in 2008. This was the only time in the state's history that it voted for the Democratic Party since 1976, of course, when Jimmy Carter was elected president. So after Jimmy Carter, the states of Texas and North Carolina never voted for the Democratic Party ever again, with the exception of North Carolina in 2008. So this state, um, the Democratic Party has been trying to win back for a very long time since then. 2012, they fell short. 2016, uh, three point seven percent for Trump. 2020, they got pretty close, 1.3 percent against Joe Biden. Uh, but of course, they still ended up losing. And 2024, at this point, it's not going to change. The state of North Carolina is going to remain firmly within the hands of the Republican Party. I also have the state of Arizona, 11 electoral votes. I think Trump is going to be able to win this state back. Um, in the state of Arizona, I think it's going to be a pretty difficult win for him, though. Um, the state voted for Joe Biden by 0.3%, and on the Senate level, they now have two Democratic senators after Mark Kelly won in 2020 and Kirsten Sinema won in 2018. So um, in the state of Arizona, I do think that he'll be able to flip it back. 2016, the margin was 3.5 for Trump, so he never really did too well in this state of state that Mitt Romney won by 9.1% and John McCain won by 8.5%. So uh, for Joe Donald Trump in the state of Arizona, he's going to have to campaign very hard to win there, um, but I think that he will be able to get it done, especially against Kamala Harris and in the state of Nevada as well. I do have this as a lean state. I don't think it will be tilt just because of how poorly the Democratic Party has been doing there. 2020, 2016, we've seen the same margin of 2.4% from the Democratic Party. In 2012, it was 67 and in 2008, it was a margin of 12.5. So the state of Nevada really has gone downhill for the Democratic Party since the election of Barack Obama. Um, its margin has basically been cut in half three times. And I think that in the state, you know, in the state in 2024, it'll be very, very difficult for Kamala Harris to hold on. To it, state of Nevada also has a pretty low African American population, um, which you know is even less likely to vote for Kamala Harris at this point. I don't think that Kamala Harris really is going to do too well with the African American vote, even though she is of African American heritage. Um, it will be, I think, it will be still be pretty difficult um, for her to actually do too well. I think that she'll see Clinton type numbers um, for the black vote. Um, Joe Biden did all right with it. Barack Obama, of course, did really well. But you know, even though you know she she would be the first female African American president ever. Um, I don't think it's going to happen for her, um, you know, because there's a lot more than race that decides who people vote for. And so in the state of Wisconsin, I have this as lean for Donald Trump as well. Ten electoral votes. Um, it voted for Trump, of course, in 2016 with the largest margin here in the Rust Belt, uh, a margin of 0.76 percent. Uh, Trump, of course, lost it by, you know, an even smaller margin for Joe Biden in 2020. Uh, but I do think that he'll be able to definitely win it back in 2024, as well as the state of Pennsylvania and its 19 electoral votes. So, I mean, both these three states, I mean, including Michigan as well, which I don't 
don't think will be leaned for Donald Trump. I mean, all three of these states, before the 2016 presidential election, these states had voted for the Democratic Party in every single election going back 20, 30 years. The last time a Republican won Michigan or Pennsylvania was George H. W. Bush in 1988. And of course, the last time that, you know, a Republican won Wisconsin was the election of 1984 with Ronald Reagan. So, I mean, all these three states have had a pretty long Democratic history. But, you know, of course, as the Rust Belt continues to shift significantly to the right, I mean, there is a huge amount of states in this region. Um, it is favoring the GOP here more and more. And so now we have 298 electoral votes for Donald Trump, which means I do have him winning the presidential election. Obviously, Obviously against Kamala Harris. And now we have the tilt states to fill in on this map. Um, starting off with, of course, the state of Michigan. Uh, I probably already hinted at this, but I do think Michigan uh, will definitely be tilt for Donald Trump in 2024. I think that he'll definitely be able to win it back. Uh, it's 15 electoral votes right now, I think will be um, pretty hard for um, Kamala Harris to actually hold on to the state of Minnesota as well. I have as tilt. The state was a state that Joe Biden might have won by over 7%, but in 2016, Clinton only won this state by 1.5%. So it's going to be a pretty difficult win uh, for him there, uh, for her there, uh, for Kamala Harris. So she'll still be at 181 electoral votes. The state of New Hampshire as well, same thing. Clinton won this state by, I mean, even worse than Minnesota in 2016. She won the state by 0.37%, I believe was the margin. 0.37% uh, in the state of New Hampshire for him. Hillary Clinton uh, 2024 it's gonna be you know a Trump win at this point um, the state might vote for Democrats typically but it, it is definitely a state that can swing um, to the right by quite a bit we also have the main at-large vote as being tilt for Donald Trump um, and also I also have the state of Virginia and its 13 electoral votes giving Trump now 342 electoral votes so in the state of Virginia uh, it is not this is not really specifically because Glenn Young defeated Terry McAuliffe uh, but just the fact that the state of Virginia um, I don't think it's gonna stick with Kamala Harris in 2016 Clinton only won this state by five points 2012 Obama by 3.9 and 2008 Obama by 6.3 so this state I I mean, although Joe Biden did very, very well in 2020, this state has a pretty long Republican voting history. Um, Bush in 2000, Bush again by 12 per, or by 8 percent in 2004. So in the state of Virginia, 13 electoral votes, I do still have going for Donald Trump at this point. I think he'll be able to flip it back. I think this will be you know a one time thing. The Democrats will definitely win control of it later on. Um, but 13 electoral votes, 2024 in this scenario, I do have going for the former president. And also have the states of Colorado and New Mexico as tilt for Donald Trump in his best case scenario. So um, 10 electoral votes, 5 electoral votes. I think these three states are uh, a little bit of a stretch if any of them uh, were to be. I think these are the three states in which Trump has the smallest chance of actually winning. Um, but I do think that you know, if everything is right for them, I think that Donald Trump can definitely flip these three states in the very end. Um, but Kamala Harris, of course, does have, you know, the ability to hold on to these three. But these other states, I think that in a good year for the Republican Party, I think it's very, very likely uh, that Trump will be able to defeat Harrison, the states of Minnesota and uh, New Hampshire. There's no doubt that Donald Trump has a very good chance in all of these three states. And I mean, Michigan could even be lean at this point. Um, all, th you know, these Rust Belt states, I think, are all going to go for the Democratic or for the Republican Party with the exception of the state of Illinois. So this really will be the best performance that the GOP has had um, in the Rust Belt region since, you know, Ronald Reagan. So this map gives Donald Trump 357 electoral votes in his best case scenario in 2024, 181 for Kamala Harris. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you like it down below. If you enjoyed it, comment down below who you think would win between a scenario, uh, in a scenario between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you have not, and I'll see you guys in the next video.